Assalamu alaikum. Hope you all are doing well. This is Farid Kramani. And our today's topic is more concerned regarding what are the hot key fields of interest where a youth or a new budding professional should coach himself. Because usually it's not a question only when you're entering in the university level, but it's also what you will opt for once you are done with the universities. Because universities still is a traditional mindset and continuing education is always trained towards what is required in the field. So I was looking at Department of Labor, and I'd say it's Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and I kind of tried merging all that 100 fields into top 25 fields. Many of those fields are there, so people know about it, but some of the fields which I tried handpicking and I thought, let's do a review on 10 new areas that might be new for some, major maybe. So the first one that I came across was, obviously we always talked about digital skills, technologies, data science. So that is one, right? I will not really invest much time on it. The second one is uh, remote work and freelancing, which we also speak about. So let's say first and second club together, this makes up about 60% of the workforce and future jobs, let's say in 2030. The third thing that comes up says, which is always a, recession is the right time to start your business. There is a German say. So entrepreneurship jobs. So there will be people who will require to open up their businesses. There will be businesses who will require entrepreneurial people. That will be partners or co-founders. These days you can see the culture has started that there is an ads for co-founders that, you know, many times founder need entrepreneurial people. And it's always about mix matching the passion, right? So let's say Let's say I'm a founder who's good with public speaking and technology, but then I need somebody who's good with packaging finance or my startup is towards healthcare. So I might need a healthcare doctor. So it's always co-founder on all jobs are there. The fourth one is financial literacy. Financial literacy is booming because uh, with all these happening around the world, the cryptocurrency, playing. There are people using NFTs and different kind of open sea assets, and then uh, digital USD versus digital yuan coming, and then the traditional dollar versus money matter things. So financial literacy is important, not only in terms of saving for yourself, IRA account, what comes, but also more than that because people invest now, people do safe investing, people do aggressive investing. So there are always financial advisors required, but now the paradigm is more towards these modern financial assets, which are more due towards crypto assets. The sixth one is healthcare and biotechnology, which is getting into everything, whether it's healthcare, agriculture, food security is a major, major, major issue. So good news for all the biotechs and food healthcare. And I've also taken U-turn getting now into uh, biofarming because uh, food is short. China has stopped giving uh, the love care to US, Indonesia has stopped saying palm oil to Pakistan, India has stopped saying no to rice, so no for rice. So that's why everybody needs to be sustainable. In Singapore, they are running a program called 2030 by 30, which means right now there are nine percent sustainable. They are urging youngsters to get into this technology of food farming. So now you see in the corporate structures in Singapore, they have agriculture. You know, you go to airports, you see vertical farms there. So who are there? Like Google the name, company name, Sustainer. It's a 38-year-old bank CEO who turned out to be biofarmer. So now people are moving towards these fast-moving technologies. Seventh is mental health and well-being specialists. Now, uh, a lot of symptoms happen after COVID. A lot of recession happened. A lot of uh, well-being issues came up. Social isolations came up. And as we see in schools in the United States and elsewhere, there are a lot of issues with bullying. So people who are uh, have lost their mindset in terms of uh, not psychologically cracked up, but they need some mental counseling. And these are the people who look very well. This could be one of us at some point in time. So they get into that phase, which is in between depression and uh, abnormality, which is done as mental. Uh, so that's why uh, you need mental well-being specialists to bring those people back to life again. And as they get up into disaster mode, uh, pull them back into the normal time frame. So that's that's how the mental well-being specialists will be required with that for schools, 
whether in corporate environments, whether they would be people placed with HRs, but they would be the ones who are good and psychologically experts in figuring out what to do. Okay. Uh, data science, we already spoke about, and at ASM schools, we do those four areas very strongly, cyber security, metaverse, everything we turn out into metaverse web three work. That's the need of the game. So we need to get into that. Now, global citizenship, international relations now, uh, and we know as a community very well that there are people who are unicitizens, multi-citizens, multi-country citizens who work in different three, four countries. So there are people who need to know about different laws. There are people who need to know about multiple taxations of different four or five countries. Let's say somebody is working in Pakistan, India, US, Tajikistan, let's say my we have four offices. So I sometimes need help in merging those four country laws together to see how I save myself from double taxation and where I can get benefit in the laws and the accounting laws and the legal laws. So there are very few people specialists I know that because I've been through it, but I know so many people bigger than me uh, who need those kinds of resourceful uh, lawyers, accountants who work in multi-country diameter, right? So locally, you find a lot of lawyers, accountants in US, India, Pakistan. It's about international law adaption. So you need multi-geological uh, uh, specialists. And then the fifth one is carbon credit. The 10th one is carbon credit market. So this is getting matured. Right now, it's voluntary market, but as world is moving towards disaster, I was hearing Boston Consulting Group CEO. He said that every year, 1.5 degree world's temperature is rising. This was last year. So by 2025, once this will be 5 degree, the disaster will be 6x. And that's where the carbon credit market might switch from being voluntary to mandatory. So all these bigger companies, oil and gas, entertainment, anyone, they would be mandatory to buy carbon credit. And there would be a lot of people required to do compliance on farms, compliance on agriculture industries, help these corporate giants buy carbon credit because they cannot release their fumes in the air and their production will be withheld. So you need a lot of carbon credit specialists and QA, QC engineers getting into it. So I hope my intention is to help people get into diverse areas, whether they stay in the country, they move abroad, uh, they travel globally, internationally, consult, but start looking at new opportunities, uh, read more, and I'm sure you can find your sweet niche. Thank you, Pramani, signing off.